And when we come back, one of President Trump's cabinet members, his labor secretary, was a federal prosecutor before that, and he helped a billionaire friend of Donald Trump's, Jeffrey Epstein, escape federal charges for sexually abusing and raping and trafficking in underage girls. And now there is a major development in that story today. A federal judge has ruled that the prosecutors in that case broke the law. The federal judge has ruled that Donald Trump's labor secretary, when he was a prosecutor, broke the law to help that sex trafficking rapist of young girls. Today, a federal judge in Florida found that President Trump's labor secretary, Alexander Acosta, when he was the U.S. attorney in Miami, gave a friend of President Trump's, Jeffrey Epstein, a deal promising not to prosecute him for child sex trafficking. And the judge found today that Alexander Acosta broke the law in making that deal because he kept it secret from the children who Jeffrey Epstein raped. Federal law requires that victims of crimes be notified and consulted on any prosecution deals involving the crimes committed against those victims. The little girls who Jeffrey Epstein raped were never notified of the deal that allowed Jeffrey Epstein to escape federal prosecution. That is the reason that Senator Dianne Feinstein voted against the confirmation of Alexander Acosta as Donald Trump's labor secretary. She said, I oppose the nomination of Alexander Acosta for labor secretary. His handling of a case involving sex trafficking of underage girls when he was a U.S. attorney suggests he won't put the interests of workers and everyday people ahead of the powerful and well-connected. In 2007, billionaire Jeffrey Epstein was accused of sexually abusing 30 underage girls. Acosta cut Epstein a favorable deal without consulting or even informing the victims. As a longtime advocate for the rights of crime victims, I find this deeply disturbing. And today, a federal judge found that Alexander Acosta did indeed break the law in making that deal with child sex trafficker and child rapist and friend of Donald Trump, Jeffrey Epstein. After this break, we will consider what happens next for Alexander Acosta and Jeffrey Epstein, and you'll hear what Donald Trump had to say about his friend, the child sex trafficker and child rapist. At Alexander Acosta's confirmation hearing for Labor Secretary, Senator Tim Kaine entered into the record a Washington Post article that described the deal Alexander Acosta made not to prosecute a billionaire friend of Donald Trump's in a child sex trafficking case. Senator Kane read the article aloud. Rich and famous men love to hang around with Jeffrey Epstein, a billionaire money manager who loved to party. They visited his mansion in Palm Beach, Florida. They flew on his jet to join him at his private estate on the Caribbean island of Little St. James. They even joked about his taste in younger women. President Trump called Epstein a terrific guy back in 2002, and saying that, quote, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side, close quote. Today, a federal judge ruled that Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta broke the law when he was the U.S. attorney in Miami and signed a deal with Jeffrey Epstein that allowed Epstein to escape federal charges and plead guilty to a minor state charge that carried a sentence of 13 months in the county jail. And during that sentence, Epstein was allowed to spend six days a week at his office in Palm Beach, Florida. It is unclear what happens next for Alexander Acosta, who was ruled today to have broken the law when he's a prosecutor, and Jeffrey Epstein, who was the beneficiary of that illegal deal. Joining us now, Marcy Hamilton, one of the country's leading experts on the laws covering sex crimes against children, and Mimi Roca, former federal prosecutor, is still with us. And Professor Hamilton, I want to get your reaction to the judge's ruling today. This is an extraordinary case uh, that, that we cannot think of anything like it happening before. Well, it's refreshing uh, to see that 40 girls could actually be vindicated uh, after a group of men essentially cut a secret deal. Uh, what's really amazing about the facts in this case from, my, from where I'm sitting is how often the prosecutors, Acosta's people, asked Epstein permission whether or not they could talk to the victims. It really is uh, it's, it's a great decision.
And uh, Nini, when I got this decision today, in the front it says opinion and order. And so whenever there's an order, I always flip to the back page where the judge's order is going to be. And you get to that back page, and it is mystifying. Because when it gets down <laughs> to the final order, the judge simply says, the parties should confer and inform the court within 15 days uh, how they wish to proceed on determining the issue of what remedy, if any, should be applied in view of the violation. It seems like as of today, the judge doesn't know what to do, and he's asking the parties what to do. Yeah, I mean, as you said, there, I don't think there's a, a really clear roadmap for this. This is so unusual. I, 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 you know, this is the, it, what the judge found is that they violated the Victim Rights Act, right? That's how they broke the law. And, and I think the fundamental question here is why, right? So Jeffrey Epstein got a slap on the wrist. That seems pretty clear. Why were they working so hard to keep that information from the victims? Because they didn't want the victims to object. They wanted to sneak this in under the radar. And so the question is, now that you have a judge having found that and said that that's what's happened, shouldn't that agreement that was snuck in under the radar, shouldn't that be voided? And I, I think that is an option here. I mean, again, we're in uncharted territory, but I think the judge has essentially said in the opinion, one of the remedies that is possible is the voiding of this agreement. And if the agreement is voided, then the prosecution can continue and begin anew. And the people that got immunity under the agreement no longer have immunity. And uh, Professor Hamilton, uh, am I right that there's no statute of limitations for the crimes described here? That's right. For the federal government since 2002, there is no limit on the statute of limitations. And so, these, this prosecution could go forward. They knew about 40 girls. They have plenty of possible victims to testify. Uh, I would be surprised if this doesn't get reopened, uh, although we have the problem that Acosta is in this administration. Uh, and uh, what about that, Mimi? I mean, this is, this is obviously something the, the House of, of Representatives can bring Acosta in for hearing about this. The Judiciary Committee in the House could do that. How did you reach this deal? Why did you reach this deal? Right. Well, I mean, I actually think there's sort of two separate issues now. I think one issue is what, if anything, did Acosta and possibly other prosecutors do wrong? I think the judge has made a lot of findings that could be relevant to that. We know that the Office of Professional Responsibility within the Department of Justice is now looking at that, and that's going to have to be dealt with on one track. Mm -hmm. The second track, though, is what happens to the criminal case, yeah. the original criminal case. And I actually don't think that requires Acosta or, frankly, should have any of the original prosecutors. They should have a new, untainted team that works on this prosecution. That's what I would do. And, and, and I think that's what any office with integrity would do, is, is start with a clean slate of prosecutors. They'd have to get familiar with the case. But if someone's going to look at this, it should be people who were not involved in that original prosecution. Uh, Professor Hamilton, quickly before we go, you expect a, a trial, a new trial, a new prosecution in this case? I don't see why not. I, I, I think at this point we live in an era of the Me Too era. These women deserve justice. There are so many of them, it's only fair to reopen this and to start over again. Marcy Hamilton and Mimi Roca, thank you both for joining us tonight. That is tonight's last word. The 11th hour with Brian Williams starts now.